the hard hitting political questions. So you tell us when to go. You can go anytime. It's We're on. going. All right. I am with Michael. Oh. Chis- your last Chasen. name? Chasen. Chasen. And you're the founder of what? Lexicata. And what is Lexicata? So Lexicata is essentially a CRM and client intake software built for small to medium sized law firms. And how'd you get that idea? <laughs> so a bunch <laughs> of pivots, right? So right. there's been a few pivots. Right. So um, long story short, my business partner Aaron and I were in law school and we were trying to come up with an idea for a business and we basically figured, realized that it's a lot harder to come up and find lawyers than we realized and we were in law school at the time so we said if we're struggling to find a lawyer we need to find someone else or we need to figure out a way to find a lawyer. Where so, were you going to law school? Uh, Loyola in okay. Los Angeles. So Loyola and Murmont? Exactly, exactly. So you were in law school and you're thinking we'd like to start a business. Yeah. You weren't thinking like how do I get a job at a law firm? No. What, what made you get wired like that? So I mean I come from like a family of entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, you know my grandpa had started a, ba- a pawn shop. <laughs> my father was doing real estate. My mother was doing real estate with which by itself is kind of like right. an right. Entre- entrepreneur just your own little small right. shop. And uh, my brother started his own shop. We'd always done things as a kid. The first thing we did was uh, I sold Furbies outside of uh, <laughs> what's it called Toys R Us when it was Christmas. I'm Jewish. So I've got nothing to do on Christmas. So the day before Christmas, I would sit there and sell Furbies, the cute little face, five years old. But I was selling them for like four hundred dollars a piece. Um, so I was the first like entrepreneurial venture I really had. And, and when, you, when you went to law school, yeah. did you go with the idea that you're going to start a business? So yeah, that was a tough one. Basically, I graduated in two thousand nine, and that was right as the you know crash right. was happening. Right. And there were some jobs available, but not ones I really wanted. Right. And I either said I could go start my own thing right now, I can go to law school, or I could go into real estate with my family or something. And uh, I basically, you know, decided law would be a really good background for starting a business. And um, what else am I going to do to ride out this crash? So I went to law school, kind of with the anticipation of eventually I want to start my own business. And I thought maybe a law firm was almost its own form of a business, or I could go and use the knowledge elsewhere. Yeah, and as an as an aside, I mean, I'm, I practice law, but now I'm in, in business. I look at a law degree as a great thing to help, yeah. just in your thinking yeah. and, and relationships with people and whatnot. I don't know what you think, like after getting the law degree and going, okay, what did this thing do for me? Yeah, so, I mean, it's tough. I get that question a lot because right. I get a lot of you know young right. entrepreneurs coming to me right. saying, hey, you went this path. Is this the right, right move? And frankly, it's hard to give the advice. It's it's a lot of money to go to law school. If you've got free or your parents are paying for you, then by all means, (laughs) knock your socks off, go to med school too. You'll learn some stuff there too. Um, But it's a tough justification for the cost, but it is a really, really good education investment. Um, I'll tell you this though, past the first year, it's worthless. So it might be worth it to spend 50 grand, go to your first year of law school, and then say, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I guess I, we'll get off that aside. I have a different opinion because yeah. I, I, I found it worthwhile all the way through. Yeah. Um, but it, going back to when you say a pivot, I yeah. assume that means, okay, you got started on something, and then you realize, okay, that may not work. Let's pivot over here. Yeah. How'd that all come about? Yeah, so, um, so originally we started with that idea of like basically a marketplace to find lawyers yeah. and clients. That was called Law Kick. Right. Um, that actually went pretty well for about a year or two. We raised a few hundred thousand dollars from outside investors, and, you know, had hundreds of lawyers using it, but there were a couple fundamental problems. So basically a pivot always arises from, I see a different problem as a result of the first thing you were trying right. to solve. So we saw two problems with the market we were playing with. One was the lawyers were providing a really bad experience. We would send the clients to a law, to a law firm or a lawyer, <laughs> and the lawyers would send them paper PDFs. They would you know, send them one message and never follow up. And it's kind of the same way I would get irked when I would send a referral and right. the clients would get a bad experience. So they would say, hey, the website's great, but the lawyers are terrible. So that was the first problem. <laughs> so almost like uh, uh, sending someone in an Uber, but asking them to pay with cash. Right. Um, it's kind of not a frictionless right. experience. And the second thing was on the lawyers. The lawyers weren't willing to pay for the leads we were sending them. And when we figured it out, it was really the leads were good, the lawyers were just bad at converting them. So we realized, okay, this problem needs to be fixed before we can fix the other problem. And that's kind of where the pivot arose was, you know, we said, okay, this business model is tough right now and there's a, there's a need that needs to be fixed first. When, so you start, you were doing this with your buddy from law school. Mm-hmm. How'd you guys get by? Now you're out of law school, yeah. you got an idea. Yeah. I mean, 300,000 is not... It's not a lot of money, yeah. um, but it takes a lot of time to raise and yeah. screw around with all the stuff there. I mean, 
I mean, how'd you deal with all that? Just yeah. getting by. So we pretty much on that couple hundred thousand that we raised, um, used none of it for ourselves. Right. It was all for employees, for office, whatever. Um, my business partner at the time had started, his background is more in like product design and, and development a little bit. So he had started his own like kind of like a shop for building iPhone games and apps. So he was making residual income from that. So thankfully he had <laughs> that. The roof over exactly. <laughs> and then for me, I had been working at a business consulting firm. So they kept me on as a consultant part time. And then I was also driving Uber. Yeah. Which is this is this is the great story here because you 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 read online all the time. Okay, go raise all the money, raise the money, raise the money. And I'm yeah. thinking, you know, there's a lot you have to figure out about what your business is. You don't need the money until you figured all this out. Right. And you can do things for I me. Mean, you went out and drove Uber to supplement another job while yeah. you're doing this. You have a buddy that's doing apps and another yeah. thing. Are you guys still working together now? Yeah, yeah, still partners. Thinking, so how many yeah. years later is so that? It's been six years. Yeah, so when did you reach the like the low point? Is this <laughs> ever going to work out? So many times. I mean, I mean, when, like, when, like, when, like, like, oh my God, we've, we're going to have to stop this and go do uh, something real. <laughs> So, um, so there was one night in particular I remember, it was like as vivid as can be, this was about, uh, probably about four years ago before we started Lexicata. Um, basically, what had happened was we, were started, we had started doing the pivot and we had one software developer that we were paying, I think a thousand dollars a month, right? Full time. He had just graduated from one of these boot camps, yeah. didn't know what he was doing, built the first version of our, of our software and then about two months in after we... Yeah, we weren't charging or anything, and he basically was like, hey, I just got a job at Scorpion, um, the, the marketing <laughs> firm. And I was like, look, man, like, you can't leave us. Like, we're nothing without you. We don't know how to build this stuff, right? And he was like, look, man, I'm sorry. I want more. I want, like, you know, I, I'm not looking for a startup life. I'm, I'm, this was cool. And we were like, whatever they're paying you, we'll match it. We'll give you health care. We couldn't afford any of it. It didn't matter. He was gone. So that night that he quit was probably the lowest point of my life where I literally like just sat on my rooftop just like <laughs> drinking beer and being like what the hell am I gonna do and so uh, necessity breeds yep. innovation right um, or at least like you know survival so what happened was the next day I get into work me and my partner are looking at each other like what the hell are we gonna do and I said you know what I'm a salesman like let me sell and he's like, nobody's going to buy this crap, right? It was honestly crap at the time. Um, but it was something. Right. And he was like, okay, go for it. First day, I sold like a year subscription for like 99 bucks. I was like, okay. Next day, I sold another year for 195 I was just making up prices right. at this point. And then a couple, you know, a couple weeks later, fast forward, we've made a couple thousand dollars worth of money. I was like, oh, maybe this is something people will actually pay for. And that was the first lesson of a startup, which is charge earlier than you want to because you never feel ready. The product never feels ready. It, it'll never feel ready. And you, and you have to, <coughs> until you get customers, they can't tell you what's working for yeah. them and what's not. Yeah. And then once you get the money, it feels like wind in your sails. Oh my God, I built something yeah. that somebody will take money yeah. out of their pocket. When did you know, I mean, you made that turn real fast. Right. When did you know, hey, we're going to pull this off? You know, because Lexicon has got a pretty good name right now in the marketplace. Yeah. You hear of the company regularly. You've done a nice job. When did you first feel like, okay, we may do this? I'd say about like three or four years ago. Um, so I'd say probably about six months after. So when we first started Lexicata, we originally had the idea of using it as a revenue driver for the original business. Right. We said, we're going to do this to try to generate maybe $10,000 a month to like fund the other company to keep us alive right. long enough to like ride out whatever business model we need to figure out. Um, I'd say when people started saying, I can't live without it, we thought it was more of like a luxury than a necessity. And then when we had a, a, one of our lawyers was basically like, I started using your software and I doubled my revenue in, the, in two months. And I was like, holy crap, really? Like, I didn't even know I could do that, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so that was like the turning point. And then we started, you know, once, once it got to the point where we could say, hey, we're no longer taking annual payments only, we're taking monthly because we can afford to, that's when like the really shift Wait, occurred. What would you tell, you know, somebody, you know, either back in law school thinking I'd like to start something, or maybe it's a lawyer practicing that's gone, I want to get out and start a company, Yeah, you know, what would you tell them? So I tell so you're sitting down over a beer, yeah. just chatting with them. You're never ready. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of friends that I've pushed, not necessarily the entrepreneurship, but their own practice. Right. They're not happy. They're not making enough money. It's like, look, man, you've got you've got the tools. 
nobody knows what they're doing anyways. Like, if everyone's right. faking it till they make it, right? And I'm proof of that, you know, for the first year right. of doing it. Um, just don't wait because the only way you're going to learn and figure out how to run your own business is by doing it. And the only way to get a crash course is by failing sometimes. And you're going to fail and that's fine. Just your goal is to fail more than you or succeed more than you fail. And when you do fail, really understand why. I think a lot of people try to ignore their failures because it makes them feel bad. But I think the true strength of a real entrepreneur is figuring out why you failed and never doing it again or leveraging it into success. And you don't have to quit your day job to get started. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I found that with the technology costs are a lot less than they were 20 years ago yeah. when I did my first company. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of torn on that one because right. I, I, I've given that advice for a while and I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs that say don't, you know. quit? So it's tough. I think it depends what the idea is. It depends what your financial right. situation right. is, what your family situation. Right. I was relatively single at the time. I married right. a girlfriend, but like right. very not serious. And um, so it was easy for me. I was supporting myself. If I wanted to live off ramen, I could live right. off ramen. It didn't matter. Um, but... I think, uh, you know, I think you kind of, anything in life, if you're going to succeed, you almost have to be all in. And so I think it's fine to do that for a little bit with the intention of saying within three months, and I wouldn't give like product <laughs> milestones is the reason why you quit. I think it has to be like, I'm going to give myself three months because then again, necessity breeds innovation. And so, you know, exactly. And if you give yourself a timeline, you force yourself to make that decision and you force yourself to go faster than you want to. Thank you, sir. That's Thank good. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me.